happy birthday to you. You can see she's really paying attention to my, my little serenade here. Happy three years, you little stinky face. Hello, everybody. So, yes, uh, today is Miss Tulip's birthday. She's three years old. So I'm really excited about today's video, and the reason why is because as I have mentioned before, I'm super, super focused on telling you as much information as I possibly can about Red S. Today, I'm going to do what I'm calling an interpretive reading of the IOC consensus statement on Red S. The IOC, of course, is the International Olympic Committee. So these are the people that make the rules and regulations surrounding all the things having to do with the sports and as well as the athletes who are participating in the Olympics. So I actually have my computer open right here and I'm going to be reading from the actual IOC consensus statement and talking about it. So you'll see me looking down a lot. I'm sorry if that bugs you. Of course, I'm going to provide a link below to the actual IOC consensus statement online. You'll find that the IOC consensus statement contains citations for all of the research that was conducted in order for them to come forward with this statement. Okay, first, I want to read to you a little bit of the abstract for this consensus statement. The syndrome of Red S refers to impaired physiological function, including, but not limited to, metabolic rate, menstrual function, bone health, immunity, protein synthesis, cardiovascular health caused by relative energy deficiency. The cause of this syndrome is energy deficiency relative to the balance between dietary energy intake and energy expenditure required for health and activities of daily living, growth, and sporting activities. Psychological consequences can either precede Red S or be as a result of Red S. The clinical phenomenon is not a triad of three entities of energy availability, menstrual function, and bone health, but rather a syndrome that affects many aspects of physiological function, health, and athletic performance. Just to be clear, the IOC's consensus statement is not saying that the female athlete triad is not good. All it's saying is that it's not enough. There are many more parts of the body than just your bones and menstrual health that are affected when you are in this state of energy deficiency. The IOC reminds us that the goal of this paper is to protect the health of the athlete. In fact, most of the consensus statement defines Red S, but also what it does is go on to explain guidelines for recovery, including plans that athletes with their coaches, nutritionists, doctors can put in play for them to actually be able to return to sport. So let's get into this a little bit deeper. The underlying problem of Red S is an inadequacy of energy to support the range of body functions involved in optimal health and performance. Low EA, or energy availability, which occurs with a reduction of EI, which is energy intake, and or increased exercise load causes adjustments to body systems to reduce energy expenditure, leading to a disruption of an array of hormonal, metabolic, and functional characteristics. Okay, what does this mean? The human body is extremely, extremely adaptable. It's much smarter than we're ever gonna be. So when you exercise too much and don't eat enough, your body compensates by actually reducing the amount of hormones that it produces of the kind that you want and increasing the amount of hormones that you don't want. So female hormones not being produced as much. Cortisol, which is a stress hormone, is being produced more. Not just the hormonal changes, but also metabolic changes take place. That means that your body adjusts to the self-inflicted famine, because that's actually what we're doing when we don't eat enough and exercise too much. We are self-inflicting famine. So the body learns to adjust to that. It shuts the metabolism down. It makes you survive on much less calories. You might find that you're cold. You might find that you're tired. You might find that you are miserable. Sound familiar? The next part of this consensus statement is a little bit prickly. It addresses disordered eating. The way women get to this point of hypothalamic amenorrhea, the way they get to the point of not eating enough and exercising too much, typically has to do with a disordered pattern of eating. According to the consensus statement, it is not clear whether women have disordered eating habits, which leads them to the path of not eating enough, or if having an outside strain set upon them, such as a certain number of pounds they want to lose before a competition, or having to make weight to fit into a certain 
uh, grouping of their sport, let's say for boxing or for rowing or for any number of things, that that inflicted kind of goal for them to have to lose weight ends up creating an obsession, which ends up creating a need to control calories and food intake, which ends them down a path of disordered eating. It doesn't really matter how we got here. The fact is, is that the way out is the same. And of course, for both, it is eat more, exercise less. I wanna to read to you what the consensus statement says about disordered eating. The first sentence for me, it just really is the most important one. Here we go. The disordered eating continuum starts with appropriate eating and exercise behaviors, including healthy dieting and the occasional use of more extreme weight loss methods, such as short-term restrictive diets. The continuum ends with clinical eating disorders, abnormal eating behaviors, distorted body image, weight fluctuations, medical complications, and variable athletic performance. Okay, let me just go back to that for one second. The disordered eating continuum begins with healthy dieting and the occasional use of more extreme weight loss, loss methods. What are we saying here? We're saying here that once you even remotely start down the path of dieting, whether it's for your sport or for any other reason, this is the beginning of a disordered eating pattern. You might tell yourself that you're trying to drop five pounds to be faster for your next race, but by this definition, you have actually begun the process of going down a continuum toward disordered eating. The IOC consensus statement also talks about health and performance consequences of Red S. It says here that Red S can have serious implications for many body systems resulting in short-term and long-term compromise of optimal health and performance. It goes in to cite a million studies that were done that explains all the different areas of your health and performance that are going to be affected by not eating enough. We talk about cardiovascular, gastrointestinal, endocrine, reproductive, skeletal, renal, central nervous system stuff. Hormonal and metabolic abnormalities caused by red S and carbohydrate deficiency can result in a reduction in glucose utilization, mobilization of fat stores, slowing of metabolic rate, and decreased production of growth hormone. You've heard me talk about this before. I actually have a couple of videos on this topic. If you need a little review, you know where to go. Red S also has adverse consequences for bone. Changes in bone structure, resulting increased risk of stress fractures. Functional impairments associated with low energy availability include a greater prevalence of viral illnesses, injuries, and most critically reduced responsiveness to training and subsequent performance. There's also a really important psychological and emotional component to all of this. And I'm going to read this sentence. For me, it was really important. Irregular or absent menses may have significant emotional impact, creating an anxiety and an altered state of perception of self-normalcy. Hi, ding, 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 ding. All the bells were ringing when I read that. I don't know about you, but I am like the poster child for that whole statement right there. I always felt like an alien. I felt like I had this problem that not only could no one explain to me, but also I was afraid to talk to other people about it, thereby just creating another cycle of, you know, being afraid to talk about something that was bothering me, not getting the help that I needed, not doing the research necessary, and just on and on it goes. You know, the consensus statement talks about screening methodologies and it talks about, um, you know, coming up with a plan to try to diagnose the situation in female athletes. It talks about, you know, doing some lab work and doing a psychological assessment, possibly an eating disorders assessment. And what I'm about to say right now is gonna be probably pretty controversial, but you know what? If you are watching this video right now, you don't need an assessment you know what the problem is. Okay, now I'm gonna close the computer. Let's have a chat, okay? The most interesting thing about Red S is that it is not something that comes from the environment. It is not something that grows on its own in your body, and it is not something that you can catch from someone else. It is something that is self-imposed. That means two things. First of all, you get all the credit when you get better, but also, it's up to you to decide and put the plan into place to get better. In your heart, you know what you need to do. You need to let go. 
exercise less or not at all. Give your body a break and eat more food. Just eat more food. I know we wish it was that easy and I know that there's so much wrapped up in this. You know I was there, but I'm coming up on a year of defeating amenorrhea and the only way I keep it going is by keep putting food in my mouth. Sort of being silly, but you know it comes from my heart. Remember that you can find me on Facebook now, Facebook slash A Case of the Jills. You can follow me on Instagram at A Case of the Jills, which is, and I'm sorry, the only place where I allow myself to obnoxiously post pictures of where I am right now. That's all gonna change in a couple of weeks when I'm back in the States, so just bear with me for a moment. Please like and subscribe to this channel. I actually, well, I'll save that for another video, but I've got some stuff to tell you about what's going on with YouTube, so. In the meantime, hope you guys have a great day.